Welcome to the next episode. This is where we start installing the foam underneath the floor. As we talked about in our last episode, we're looking at approximately 10 holes strategically drilled and poured inside of this boat. Before we can cap it off with the Kevlar, we need to make sure we've got an adequate amount of foam installed underneath. So just in case this thing ever sinks, it will only sink just below the water line and not go to the very bottom of the ocean. Or if you live close to a lake, it won't go to the bottom of the lake. So, makes sense. Some people don't install it. Makes rebuilding the boat in the future easier for the person doing it. But, as you saw the amount of effort we put in to this one, I'm not really too worried about that. This thing is going to last many many decades so anyway on that note let's go ahead and start drawing some spots of where we're going to start filling these cavities and as i mentioned before you can see the lines of screws that designates the different sections here so what we're going to do is consider is there going to be any seat in this area and if there is we're going to try to position this um, hole on a, in a way that it doesn't affect it so nothing really too crazy over here to worry about so I'm gonna go ahead and probably like right here we'll drill a hole and then we'll also drill one even with it as well all right let's go to the front of the boat now now there's going to be a seat approximately right here so don't you don't want to drill any holes um, right there and then you can see it goes pretty far forward up that way so let's get let's get a hole drilled right here and then you'll you can see where the stringer divides itself and let's do another one right there as well okay and that should cover the foam up front I'll make sure when I pour the foam on the front section I'm likely going to dump two buckets up there just so I know it catches as far forward as possible. I don't want to drill any closer to the front just because it gets kind of low in that area and I don't want to take a chance with punching a hole through the bottom of the boat with my hole saw. So I know it's a little bit of a paranoia but it's just the way I'm going to do it. So anyway, you've got the two back there, two up front. And then let's capture here in the middle. All right. One right there. And let's drill another one. Right there. So we've got two, four, and this will capture all the way up to that area. And then we've got uh, a total of one, two, three, four. We got six on that one. Let's go over here and we'll do the same thing. We've got our screws. I'm going to try to get as far forward as we can, not impeding where the seat is going to go. We'll do one there. All right, there's two in the front section. Let's go to the back and we'll try to drill in roughly the same position where the other ones were. Okay, and you can see the stringers on each side and essentially what I'm going to do is just try to follow the same line this way it's cleaner all right there's one there and you can see there's our other stringer so we'll do the other one right there so we've got two four six and that will cover everything down the line and obviously in this section here there's a fuel cell or a fuel tank we're not going to put anything there we've got in the middle we've got the ski locker we're not going to do anything there ski locker goes all the way forward so this part will remain hollow so that's going to be it let's talk about now what is it that we're going to use to pour or eventually what, what size hole saw are we going to use here? And this is what I'm going to use. I was originally going to go with a 
uh, two inch. I think this one is like two and an eighth or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, this is actually two inch. It's a nice sharp one. All right, so when you're punching a hole through this, be careful because what, what it likes to do and what I like to do when I'm drilling through uh, plywood is I like to start it up until the drill bit comes through the other side and then I stop and I drill it through the other way. This way it doesn't create any kind of um, breaks under the under the cores here or the face of the plywood it doesn't crack the face and make this really nasty spider. You won't see it on this side. It would be on the other side. It just, uh, you know, it kind of damages the wood. So since we can't do that, as you're drilling through, it goes super slow and definitely try not to punch through it. The other thing too is make sure you're using the type of hole saw that captures the little piece of plywood afterwards because if it falls in there, which I have seen before, it's not a big deal because the foam will keep it from rattling. But if you do happen to get it in a position where it does rattle, you could have this really annoying rattle underneath the floor for, you know, indefinite time to come. So definitely try to capture it. These Lennox versions, they do hold on to the um, pieces and they don't go through. So I've seen other hole saws where they don't do that. They just fall right on through as you uh, zip through it. But this is this is a pretty good brand to use. They sell it at Lowe's. Probably can find it online. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to start drilling these holes. Uh, six holes. It looks like a total of 12 is what we're going to go with here. And then I'll show you what we're going to be using for foam and all that fun stuff and some tips uh, to pouring the foam. Okay, as you can see here, this is a brand new one. Took my, my finish off immediately. But if you notice, to see if I can get it to focus, it did capture the little piece. If you do happen to lose it and it falls in the hole, don't spend hours trying to get it out. Just make sure when you put your foam in there, uh, make sure you cover it with foam because it will start to rattle. So you can see all the little stuff that we left in there. You can see inside looks pretty good. I didn't split the face of the plywood on the other side as uh, I thought I was going to. So that came out pretty good. So anyway, let's go ahead and drill another one to this side and don't forget to take this out and save it. Yeah, because otherwise, yeah, it's going to look pretty weird. if it will come out here slowly it's tough doing this with one hand I'm telling you the things that I do for my viewers here I'll tell you what some of you are probably like why don't you just turn the camera off and take it out <laughs> anyway yeah there you go Easy enough. I'm gonna. It, I'm probably gonna reuse this one, uh, but I will go ahead and sand off the edges a little bit because you'll see when we go to reinstall these. That would that would suck if I dropped that in there. Um, when we go to reinstall them, I actually put the epoxy thickening compound around it to kind of help um, with the the bond. Anyway, all right. Let's go ahead and drill this one next. Okay, and there is a second one. Easy enough. As far as um, all the excess, I'm, I'll bring in the vacuum cleaner and uh, vacuum all this up. Yeah, there's our stringer and our cavity. Just so you know, if, if you do use your hole saw, and I thought this was kind of neat. Uh, the first boat that I ever rebuilt, when I used the hole saw, and I was cutting into one of the stringers, it actually, when I was cutting into it, once I made it through to the other side, it actually made a hissing sound because, believe it or not, it was actually pressurized inside of the stringer. So it just goes to show how good of the seal was underneath. So if you if you have that happen, uh, comment below because I want to see if it, you know if it was just me or not that that happened to. It hasn't happened on this boat, but it did it did on a prior one. Kind of neat. Okay, there's our two in the center. You can see this one good and this one as well let's go ahead and capture the last two on the front and then we'll just duplicate it on the other side 
All right, so you can see here we've got the two, four, there's a six, all right, eight, 10, and 12. All right, so there's kind of, we've got all kinds of um, plywood dust laying around here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to pick up all these little pieces and put them in a nice safe spot. And then I'm gonna bring the vacuum cleaner in here and we're gonna vacuum it up. And that is gonna do it here um, for this first half. Okay, so all 12 holes are now cleaned up. We've got the vacuum in here. And we are ready to rock and roll and start mixing some of the product. So as we move into the second half, of this video series. Let's go ahead and talk about what it is that we got, how we're going to use it, and we'll get started with pouring this beneath the floor. Okay, here we are. We got the setup here. So, your main question, you're watching the video, I'm redoing my boat, you're doing your boat, you're saying, how much foam do I need? That's the big question that I know a lot of people are going to ask. The first time that I rebuilt a 22 foot boat, I ran out of foam. And I said to myself, this time I am not gonna let that happen. So what I'm using currently is 80 pounds. And I forgot what I got before, but I did not have enough to do an entire side of a stringer, which is kind of a lot. I ended up uh, having to order more, it took another week. so. In this series here, I'm using 80 pounds. It um, ping me if you if you get a question about the cost of it. I can I can show you where the link is to the website. It does fluctuate, but as you can see here, I got U.S. composites, two pound marine foam. It comes in a part A and a part B. It is really easy um, to mix. Unlike some of the other stuff, it's you know like three to one ratio. This is a one to one. So if you're if you've used the foam before and you've got confidence in it you can do you can get a two and a half core and then these two one quarts and you mix part a in here part b in here up to one quart then what you're going to do really fast is dump both of them together and stir together for 20 to 25 seconds once you've done that you've got about 20 seconds to pour both quarts now which would be two quarts that is in here inside of one of those holes and if you don't it'll start expanding you'll be able to see it start to foam up and uh, it may become so uh, large as you're trying to expand it if you're taking too long that it won't fit into the hole so keep that in mind um, this is the brand that i'm using here us composites marine foam they sell it in two pounds four pounds all the modern boats by the way they all use four uh, pound uh, foam underneath the floor it's perfectly acceptable and up to u.s uh, coast guard code to use two pound it's very common and expands twice as much and you you get twice as much so you'll get twice as much effectiveness by using two pound which is perfectly acceptable over four pound so keep that in mind. Like I said, two pound is, is perfectly fine. Anyway, I've used um, used this before, so I'm pretty familiar with it. I'm gonna go ahead and mix mine uh, two quarts at a time. If you're using it for the first time, I recommend maybe using a smaller amount so you can kind of get a feel for how fast it expands. And um, yeah, just make it where you don't you don't make any mis mistakes here. So anyway, I'm using 80 pounds. I'm gonna give give it a shot here uh, in the video series, so you all can see what 80 pounds is gonna look like underneath a, a standard standard size uh, floor. Like I said, this boat is I believe 19 feet. So if you're running a 19 foot boat, similar size stringers and whatnot, 80 pounds may work out for you, or maybe you know way too much. So we'll find out. Like I said, I'll be the guinea pig for you all here. So I just knew um, the last time I did this, I definitely did not have enough. So anyway, that's going to go ahead and conclude part one of the series. I know we're running at somewhere around like 15 minutes. And what we'll do in the second part of this video series is we will actually uh, go ahead and prep it. We'll mix it 
and live on camera we'll we'll pour it so you can kind of see what what it looks like all right so anyway hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to my channel like the video if you thought part one was pretty cool we're gonna get really crazy in part two it's it's good times i love foam and um anyway we'll catch you in the next episode have a good one